Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, which means it's time for another video. It's a Talk Magic today, a Talk Magic interview with two people who I've spoken about on this channel many times, two very good friends of mine, two incredible creators of magic and i've got them on the channel for a very specific reason but first of all let me introduce them uh, because they are two of the most prolific creators in magic and and some of their best and most popular releases are when they come together and join forces you'll hear more about that in a minute but the two people i'm talking about first of all i have uh, i have somebody here who was responsible for the 2020 uh, one Penguin Magic Trick of the Year, somebody that has released more magic than almost anybody I know, and it's always incredible. Um, the one and only David Jonathan. And with us, we also have um, the person that's responsible for, I think, probably the best Alakazam trick they've ever brought out, which is the collector, somebody who has this innate ability to just create magic with a very simple method, but very, 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 um, you know, just engaging. Uh, I am talking about Nicholas Mavresis. I've got David and Nicholas here on the channel, both together. How are you doing, guys? You okay? Hey, Craig. Fantastic. Awesome. It's so amazing to have you here. Now, I'm going to say to everybody that's watching this, first of all, I have done separate interviews with both David and Nicholas. Go and check those interviews out. They were two of my favorite interviews I've ever done on this channel. And if you plan on ever becoming a creator in magic, the information that these guys freely gave in those interviews were fantastic. I'm interviewing David and Nicholas for a couple of reasons. The first reason is I want to find out what's happening over the next year, because I know that they've both had an incredible 2023. We're now going into 2024 and I fully expect their name to be right up there, if not at the top when it comes to, you know, the most popular releases of 2024. So I'm hoping to sneak some information out of them. But also the other reason I want to speak to them is because they're very unique. And I don't know anybody else in Magic that does this in that David has built up his own brand as a creator and has worked with some of the biggest companies in Magic and continues to release Magic at a very high level. Nicholas has a huge brand as a creator and has released many, many projects um, individually. But they have now, for the last couple of years, come together and uh, they release magic together, which they've worked on together, they've conceptualized together, they've created, they've released this magic together. <clears throat> One of the best tricks of 2023 um is is uh you know and it made the magic tv top 10 list for 2023 and i'm just telling them this for the first time <laughs> profiles which they both obviously uh put together but and 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 you guys do that an awful lot you know you put these uh and i want to talk to you about that if i can i want to talk to you about how that works and, and creativity. I want this to be a kind of a discussion between the two of you about creativity, how hard it is working with somebody else. You know, do your creative processes mesh, how that all comes together. I just think this would be a really fascinating interview with two of the best creators in magic, as far as I'm concerned. Would that be okay with you guys? Sounds fantastic. And thank you for the <laughs> praise. <laughs> it's true. I love you both. I think you're amazing. So, I suppose the first question, I'll try and uh, make this as organized as I can, even though I'm I'm kind of all over the place with this one. But the first question I've got for you is, when did you guys meet? Because as far as I'm aware, you've never met each other in person, which makes it even more impressive that you're creating all this incredible magic and you've never even been in the same room as each other. Like, how did that come to be? Nicholas, want to take this one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I was doing a lecture uh, for Luca Volpe's uh, channel back in, I don't remember, it seems like ages ago, but it, it isn't, you know, but probably 2000. Yeah, it was during COVID. Yes, yeah, correct. So uh, David was watching that lecture. I think he knew Cinemental. That's why he, he was interested in watching the lecture. And he found my ideas uh, groundbreaking. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> he, he liked the lecture anyway, and he contacted me after the lecture, and we started talking. He showed me a couple of his ideas, and I thought, "Hold on a minute, you know, you know, I have something similar." I showed him my ideas. Then he he said, 
after watching my ideas, he said, oh, I have something similar to this. And we, we quickly realized that, you know, we have the same philosophy, same, uh, you know, same ideas, same premises. And uh, I really liked his thinking. And uh, that was a neutral thing, you know. Um, and yeah, we, we got talking and, uh, you know, day after day, you know, he won a, a trick of mine because I, I did a competition during the lecture and I sent him, what was it? It's sentimental, I think. You all yeah. have one. Yeah, so I sent, I sent you another one. Anyway, and yeah, we got we got talking and I, I you know, I really appreciated, appreciated his thinking and the methods and the premises and everything. So yeah, that started it all, you know, that lecture. Wow. Yep. That's fantastic. So when did this become so th there's there's a world of difference between jamming ideas out between each other and actually making this a commercial endeavor, which I'm assuming, and I haven't spoken to you either about this, but I'm assuming as you release magic together through various different companies, you know, I know that I'm thinking about it, pretty much every company you bought something together out with that's become a commercial endeavor. You know, you're, you're making magic, you're selling magic together. At what point did it change from, you know, we're jamming ideas out with each other to, you know, we actually should release this magic together, especially as you guys have really big names individually. It's not like, David, you needed the rub from Nicholas. Like, oh, I'm the struggling creator. I'm not selling stuff. I need Nicholas to help boost my profile. And the, the reverse is true as well. Nicholas, you don't need David to help boost your profile. So what made you kind of guys go from, okay, I'm going to flesh this idea out. Thank you so much for your help to let's put both of our names on the box and put it out there. So I think the first one was, I mean, the first release was a stoop test, but I think that's the first one we worked together on. Uh, so I, it all starts with, you know, he is probably the first person that I share any new idea or effect with to get his feedback on and vice versa. So I was working on stoop test as my own thing for a while, just because I love the, the premise, the hook of it. And I was trying to figure out, you know, the method of getting what I need to happen, happen. And at the time, I think I was using like a variation of the 1011 force and I showed it to Nicholas and then he was like, well, why don't we do you try this? And I'm like, whoa, that's amazing. And then it sort of went from there. And then I was like, dude, I mean, you contributed like so much, like the, the whole uh, method, you know, the, the presentation was now mine and then the, the method was now his. So I was like, I, I don't feel comfortable just like putting this out there with my name on and just crediting Nicholas for such a huge contribution. So I was like, let's release this together. And, you know, Nicholas being Nicholas was like, no, 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 are you sure this is your thing? And I was like, no, no, no trust me, like, I, it only feels right to me. So that was sort of the first case of like, you know, it really was kind of like a 50-50 contribution that it just only felt right. Um, and then I guess, I, I don't know how the rest sort of come to be because it's not like, you know, I, we stopped doing our own solo uh, projects, but uh, sometimes we'll just have an idea and we'll share that with each other or we'll share an effect, uh, kind of like a stoop test thing where then the other person just adds so much to it or it becomes a joint thing or, you know, that you can't like just write this stuff in stone. But I think one of the most important things about any of this is that you, the relationship has to be there. I mean, I consider him one of my best friends in the world, even though we've never met in person. So like we have a dynamic where we can be open and honest and trustworthy with each other. And that doesn't happen all the time because I've attempted to work with other creators, um, not saying that it doesn't happen, but you know, sometimes I'll try to start something with someone else and it's just like, we're not meshing on the same level and we yeah. just can't get past some of the hurdles. Um, so the, the biggest thing is that, you know, not only do, do we have the same mind and magic, but we have the same sort of, um, mental approach or just a friendship or bond that, you know, you know, Ooh. Hey, I don't like this idea. Right. Or, uh, let's, I don't think this is good. We should do this instead. And sometimes some people will get a little defensive because you're saying, I don't like your idea. Some people take offense to that, but him is like, no, okay, you're right. Let, let's work on something else because it only just improves it. So I don't know if you have anything to add, Nicholas, but that's sort of my take on how I view this whole thing. 
No, it, you are spot on. Sometimes we might uh, say right from the start, let's, you know, I have this premise, let's work on this together. Before I, you know, I, I, sometimes I say that to him because I don't want to be the, you know, I don't want to start working on it. I know, I know right from the start, if I share it with David, it's going to be much better. So I, you know, I skip now, I skip the part where I try to figure it all, uh, all on my own. Uh, like, you know, a, a good example is profile. Profile, uh, the idea started from my um, personality packet effect from Alakazam. But, you know, I wanted to, do, to make it bigger, to use any word, to use uh, a deck of cards. And that's when uh, David, uh, you know, came in and shared uh, all these beautiful ideas. And again, you know, it, sometimes, it's a 50-50 thing. Some other times I might suggest something to him and it doesn't qualify for my name to be near his. It's just, you know, a crediting. Same with David, like the collector, you know, the collector, David suggested that we added, we added the trophies on the back. Okay, I mean, you know, some, you know, we, we have common sense as human beings. I think we, we can understand where we, you, you know, where it's a joint creation and when it's not, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, we don't need to talk, you know, we, we know each other very well. As David said, I can say to him, I don't like it. He can say to me, I don't like it. In fact, he says that all the time, but <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. So well, yeah. Well, just one other quick point that I'll just add because this happened recently is that I think we have the mindset of like whatever makes the best product that's all we care about it's yeah. not the money or mm -hmm. who's the on you know whatever it's just like we just want to put out the best magic so I have um a project coming out hopefully next year I don't know but uh Craig you saw previous I'll just say the music one so oh god that's so good <laughs> uh thank you so that basic routine that I just showed you that was it. And that was like already contracted, ready to go. And then Nicholas showed me something else with all these principles built in. And I'm like, oh, dude, we can apply this to my music thing. And then it's like, whoa, this went from a one trick pony to now like seven or eight other routines with all these features built into it. So I, I called up the company. I said, look, Nicholas is on board now. We're, we're you know, this is a 50 50 thing now. And they were like, are you, are you sure you go make more money without him? I was like, no, trust me. Like I want, this will take this product from here to here. And that's all I care about. So, uh, you know, it just, it doesn't all, all happen the same way. That was just like a very, <laughs> it was all like done. So to speak. And it's like, nope, he's coming I mean, in. That's, like, like, that's a very selfless approach to this whole thing. Like, Hey, I've got a contract. They've said yeah. yes to this trick, but I now want to share the royalties because I think that Nicholas can bring something else to the table. I mean, that is the definition of make, you know, you, you sometimes people get questioned, oh, it's all about the money, it's all about the magic. That's the, the actual definition of the magic being the most important thing to you guys. Yeah, yeah it's, we is. wouldn't release, we wouldn't release something that we both were not happy, you know, to do so. We want to be 110% that uh, it's something we like. It, it's, you know, if people like it, that's even better. If they don't, that's fine. But, at, uh, you know, still, uh, no, at least we are, we would be happy with it, you know, and that's all we care about. Yeah, not just being happy, but think it's the best it can be. Like, we don't release it till it's at that point. Yeah, and we tried everything. We, you know, we have, we already have some, things we we are working on, we are 90% there, but we don't go ahead and, you know, call a company and say, oh, we have this, because we're not there yet. We, we are not at the 100% yet. Yeah. There's something, it might be a, a small thing bothering us or a small thing we're not happy about. Maybe we have a solution, but it's not the best solution. And until we find the best solution, we don't move forward. Yeah, no. that makes sense. So have you ever... <clears throat> And I don't know the answer to this. So I'm really fascinated in this whole discussion. I don't think anybody else has really done what you guys are doing right now. Have you ever kind of had an idea for a trick and just gone, you know what? I'm happy to have the other person's involvement, but I want this just for me because I'm very passionate about this or, or would that not be the case? Or is there like, so for example, um, Synergy. Okay. 
it, 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 Synergy for me, again, it's made the top 10 list on Magic TV. I think it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Like, and and that's a very much a David Jonathan trick. You know, it's like like you pioneered the work. I don't want to say what the method is, but you've pioneered the concept yeah. behind this over 2023. This is very much you. I think because of the name that you have created for yourself within this aspect of magic, I, 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 I you know, I would if if Nicholas had said something to you that would have taken synergy in a different direction would you have put nicholas's name on that or would it have been a case of you know this is this is mine i'll credit you on the project but this is a david jonathan release or is it doesn't it work like that i don't know i don't want to offend anybody i'm just trying to figure can, out this can i answer whole... that can i answer yeah. that yeah uh, I, I know that he would if i brought ideas and he, he thought that i contributed enough so he can do that but even if i thought i, I contributed less than you know 50 percent i wouldn't accept to have my name as a joint creator it's always a 50 50 uh, contribution and uh, sometimes david might contribute uh you know the, the method and i come up with the premise sometimes vice versa but now if i come to him and i share one or two ideas or presentation uh, presentational ideas and he asks me to he wouldn't because we both know where the 50 percent you know uh what's the limit of the you know of the joint creation but even if he did that i wouldn't accept but i know that you know he always asks me and uh, you know we we don't most of the time we don't need to talk we know we just know because again we we're friends we have common sense as human beings we're not uh, we don't ask more than you know we are we, we deserve you know we just we're happy to help each other and that's it i i don't know if i answered your question maybe oh maybe. you did <laughs> yeah okay. i mean like like i said every single thing that i put out is going to have some sort of his suggestions or input involved everything that he puts out you know most of the time we'll have some of my little tidbits or just like little suggestions here that it may have incorporated or not like it's just when does it get to the point where it's like okay we really feel uh, it's almost like a personal thing like I feel guilty putting this out without like saying that it's a joint thing because you did so much for this you know it's like but uh, and a lot of times now it's like hey I have an idea that I think we should both work on together and you know that's how a lot of the stuff starts now because maybe we hit a wall or maybe we just think that like we know we both will love this premise so let's tackle this together and see what we come up with yeah and most most of the time it, it you know it, it's a better trick you know it, we know that i mean as i said sometimes i have an idea and i'll, I'll say to him right off the bat you know let's work on this together because i know that he would love the premise or maybe i share the premise see if he likes it and if he does why not work together i mean it's going to be better anyway i mean two minds are always better than one so that's great i i, I want to talk very briefly about advice that you can give to creators in magic i've got two of the most prolific creators on the channel right now i may as well use and abuse you um <laughs> so to speak so i've talked about this before but when people come into magic I think a lot of people gravitate towards being a creator. And I think one of the reasons is we put creators on pedestals, don't we? It's like, oh my gosh, you know, there's this person that's released this trick. It's it's nice to think that there's people in magic shops seeing your name on a box. You know, it's 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 yeah. wonderful. So and and it's a double-edged sword. It's good because it helps inspire creativity, but it's bad in the I think a lot of the time people rush to release tricks before they're ready because they just want to be seen as a creator. You know, they come into magic. I, I read a, a thing on Facebook the other day that somebody, you know, first started doing magic three months ago and has now released their first trick. And it's kind of like, well, it could be good, but you've only got three months of experience under the belt, you know? So the, the point I'm trying to make is everybody coming into this industry wants to be a creator to some respect. Now you, between you, created some of the best tricks that have ever been developed. What advice would you give to people that want to make and and I'm not just talking about creating magic for their own show. I'm not talking about hey, I want to create a trick to perform to my audiences. I'm talking about doing what you guys have done. You know, create a brand, create a name for yourselves as creators. You know, getting you know booked for lectures all over the world. What 
advice would you give people? Because you've both been there, done that, bought the T-shirt and continue to do it at a very high level. Who wants to go first? You're talking, you go ahead, I'll, I'll follow up. <laughs> okay. My advice is to listen to the magic companies and what they have to say. Unfortunately, sometimes when you send a trick to a company and you think it's perfect, it, it's actually not. So listen to these guys because they know what they're doing. You might you might think, you know, my trick is perfect. They don't know what they're saying, that they don't know what they're talking about. But you know, they've they've been doing this for so long. You should listen to them, you should take their advice. Unfortunately, sometimes magic companies don't bother replying back to you, and that's uh, that used to bother me. Uh, some other times they might reply to you and give you a funny excuse, uh, you know, uh, any excuse. But you know, insist, ask them what what do you think is wrong with my trick because you really want to improve, improve it and to make it better, hopefully. So listen to them, find someone, find a, find a trusty friend. You know, uh, uh, who can tell you their honest opinion and try to improve uh, what you are doing. Uh, I, you know, I listened many times to people saying, you know, this trick is perfect. Why don't you put it out? And I'm like, you know, I'm, I used to think, yeah, I mean, companies should take this, but but that's not the case. You know, now that I am I've matured, you know, I know and I can. I can distinguish a, a trick from being ready to a trick that's not there yet. So we used to think we, we you know, when you create a trick, you you think that you know, no, you think that your trick is perfect. Think again, it might be not there yet. So take a, take advice from people like Peter Nardi and you know pe people that are, are used to seeing a trick and know if it's going to sell or if it's, if it's a good trick, if it's a commercial trick, you know, people like you, I mean, you can, you, you create magic, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I have no words. I mean, you are the king of creation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, take advice. I mean, just listen to different people ideas and don't, don't, think that you know better than them. There are, you know, there are so many years in the business, they know what they're talking about. And my advice to the magic uh, producers, to the, the owners of the magic companies anyway, try to be try to reply to people, try to give them, to, to say to them, to advise them, what's wrong with that trick? Why you're not taking that trick? Don't all you know? Don't say you know our plate is full and uh, we have a lot a lot of things in the pipeline. And just say their, your honest opinion. I think people will appreciate your honest opinion. I don't like it because it's not good. You know, I don't like it because the method is not practical. You know, I used to I used to teach a trick for Alakazam that required you to remember uh, forty the position of forty cards. I think something you know very obscure. And because I, I could do it, I thought that everyone can do it. It's not practical. I mean, and I, <laughs> I didn't know that back then. It was one of the first tricks that I, I created. Anyway, just no, uh, just to uh, summarize what I said, listen to people that know that know what they're talking about. Listen to these people and try to improve your magic. That that's it. That's really good advice. Very, very good advice. Feedback so, is really important. That, that's what you obviously get from David all the time and vice versa. What about yourself, David? Yeah, so for me, um, I mean, I don't want to say pride myself in, but uh, one of the things that uh, if you look at like my whole range of effects that I've released is that there is a lot of eclectic, very mix of methods. Um, I, you know, from stuff with your phone to card tricks to what have you. Um, so I think it's really important to learn as many methods as you can. So this is not to rush into it because if you think about it, all the methods of things that you learn, even if it's, you know, you're looking at like children's entertainers and, you know, kids tricks versus stage illusions. Like if you have that well-rounded knowledge, that that's your toolbox, that's your tool set. When you're going to sit down and create, that's all the resources that you're going to pull from because there's so many ways to do a sandwich trick, 
right? It's like, how do you find the best one? What can you do that's different? So finding the best methods. So I think it's really important to learn as many methods and principles as you can, just so you have that foundation. So that way you're pulling from, and, you know, honestly, when I say like, look at kids uh, effects for, you know, children's entertainers, that's the furthest thing from me, but there might be a principle in there that I can then apply to, you know, close up magic trick or mentalism trick. And that's like that outside the box thinking that wouldn't spur that on if I didn't wasn't aware of all these principles. So I think it's important to build up your your uh, base knowledge of methods to pull from. Uh, and then also just trying to be uh, somewhat original in presentation. Uh, you know, when you look at the stuff that I've put out, hopefully if I'm doing my job correctly, I'm offering with each release something new, whether it's a new tweak on a method, uh, a new hook or a new presentation or something like that that's engaging. So whether you're doing that in what the premise of the effect is or in the method, uh, just trying to find something that's different because like, why do you want to release, you know, the 700th ACAN out there? I mean, unless it's like the holy grail, it's just trying to find those things. And honestly, that all takes time. So I know everyone wants to be magic famous or whatever, but really like the, one of the things that I always stress is that effects only improve over time. They never get worse. So like, don't rush things out uh, because then when you do that, it's like, oh man, I should have done this. And a year or two or however long later, you're gonna look back on that and say, oh my God, I put that out. Like, this would be so much better if I did this, 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 and this. So why do you want to rush to be a creator to see your name on something if it's only going to get mediocre reviews or whatever people aren't going to gravitate towards it like you want to make sure that if your name's behind something that like you want people to love it so there's just no point in rushing things out. Yeah, yeah, that's great advice that really is great advice and and what about what about inspiration if you don't mind me asking. Um. What about, because I think that the biggest problem that a lot of creators have, or at least the ones I've spoken to, is being inspired, you know, finding that initial inspiration. They've got that toolbox that you talked about. They have that knowledge base. They have experience, but it's kind of like finding that trick. It's like finding that initial thought. Like, you guys are so good at that. You you know, the, 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 both of you, it's like, let's look at your latest release, Nicholas. You know, it's so super commercial, the bigger routine. It's kind of like, you know what? I'm going to create an opening routine. I'm going to, you know, that the, the size change is just completely perfectly motivated because of the sticker and because of the pick and the big, it's just all makes sense. Same with you, D David. That initial idea, how do you get that? Like you mentioned Stroop Test earlier on, the, the first thing that you probably released through Penguin Magic as a duo, such a clever idea, you know, using a Stroop Test as a context for, you know a a a prediction and and just every yeah it's just where does the inspiration come from so uh if i can answer that i would say it's easier for for us because we are two and we suggest ideas to each other so the premises <laughs> double you know our double uh, so i might see something that i like i know david might enjoy so i i might suggest that but you know you don't have to Think it, yeah. You, you don't, you, you don't just sit and think. Okay, let's find the premise now. What we do, you know, it, it, it hits you. That, that's, what, that's what I think. I mean, just keep your eyes open. You know, if you like, like for example, movies, and you see a nice movie with a nice twist ending, you might, and you really like it. I mean, you can, you can turn this. This can be turned into a trick. You know, just ideas. Now you might see something. Uh, while driving, and it might spark your imagination. Of course, you have to have a you know a good imagination post. Also, you might see a post on Facebook and think, "Oh, that, that that's a great idea." I mean, would it be would it be great if you know? And that if becomes a, a trick. So you know, don't I, I don't overthink. I don't I I don't sit down and push myself and force myself to come up with a premise or an idea. I leave David to do that and, you know, I, I contribute then. <laughs> I'm kidding. So, I, yeah, it, it it just hits you, you know. Um, I, you know, I, I like movies, I like drinks, food, you know, I might create tricks out of those things that I like. So, just think, what do you like? 
I mean, what do you like? Do you like, uh, you know, is that, would you like to combine music with movies? Would you like to do this? You know, everything is possible. So it, it, it's all about ima imagination and uh, keeping your eyes open and your mind. Mm. So yeah, it, it's all about the premise, really. You know, a trick, you know, people, laymen don't care about the method. They don't care if you achieve the method with using, you know, using trap doors or a double lift. They don't really care. They, they care about the experience. So it's all about the premise. And uh, David and I are all about this, are all about we're all up, you know, we're up for, uh, I mean, we, we like people to enjoy the, the trip, the journey that, you know, the trick has to be engaging, maybe funny. It has to, you know, to, to give the spectator some kind of emotion, you know, uh, and method comes second. Of course, it has to be practical. I'm not saying, you know, you should use the most obscure method out there, but I think the premise is super important. And yeah, um, I don't know if David has... I want to hear your thoughts on that, David. But let me just pick up on one point you said there, Nicholas, because that's really interesting. I completely agree with everything you've said, by the way. But Nick, uh, David made the point earlier on that, like, with Stroop Test, he had one method for doing it, which was the 1011 thoughts, I think you mentioned. Yeah. And you came in on the project because you suggested a different method, which you both agreed was far better, I imagine, because that's the method you eventually ran with, with Stroop Test. Surely that's an example of method coming before, well, not pre before premise, because the premise was there, but surely that shows that method is important because if it wasn't important, then David would have just run with the initial concept he had for how to do strip test and it wouldn't have evolved into what it became with both of you on the same package. Do you know, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, but uh, the spectator would still enjoy the trick, even if David used and not good method. It's not, you know, I'm, I'm just saying that for the example here, okay? Whereas if I used a super clever method and the trick is just, you know, it's something that you could achieve with minimal sleight of hand and without a super clever gimmick, I mean, am I doing, am I improving the trick really? Or I'm just uh, being clever, you know, and that I thought uh, clever, you know, I, I thought of a clever method and that's it. If, oh, if yeah. the premise is not good, I mean, there's, you know, both both need to be good, but premise and the presentation is for, far more important to me. Yeah, I, to I totally get that. I'm 100%. I completely agree with you. It's uh, and, and the effect on the lay person or the audience member that you're performing to is paramount above everything else. But I know you guys aren't about the money, but you do want your tricks to sell. You don't want to have a trick come out through a company and nobody buys it. So part of what magicians look for is method. If I bought an A can out and it was like, right, okay, you're going to do the countdown force and that's it. You get a regular deck of cards. Nobody's going to buy it, right? So there has to be something that's going to entice the, 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 the magic community into buying it as well because there's so many tricks that come out these days. You can't buy everything. So you, pick, you have to kind of look at something and go, what... Perfect example, profiles. That's such a bloody clever method. I love performing that. Would it have the same impact on an audience if I'd used, uh, you know, used that presentation, but gone down a different route and forced four questions or forced the answer to four questions? I would have had the same thing. I could use the same presentation. But for me, one of the things that makes it from a magician's point of view the is how fun the method is. Yeah. So surely when you think of it that way, I totally get where you're coming from, but from, from a selling it to the community point of view, which is ultimately as a creator, yeah. in part has to be what it's about, else no one's going to buy it. And you put all of this effort in for nothing. Surely you have to consider that aspect of the creation as well, right? So for me, I, I think it can be all be summed down to one word, which is passion. So that applies to the premise. It has to be something that I enjoy. I mean, look at our fact, um, uh, ideal meal, food, premiere, movies. Like these are all things that Nicholas and I talk about. I mean, he's in the freaking cooking academy right now, <laughs> learning to be a chef. He's a musician. So we're talking about the music earlier. Like these are our passions. Uh, Stoop test, a fun psychological principle that I love. Like 
all this stuff is what we explore and uh you know even look at the collector it's you know killers it's you know that murder mystery theme it's all that stuff so the premise if we like it then we think that our audiences are like us and they're gonna like it too because they can relate to that stuff and not playing cards so that's just like one thing right there but personally i'm a methods guy I like we're all magicians, you know that you know when you see a really good trick and you see the method and it's like fuck that's good like right that feeling it's like we want that too that's what I strive for so personally speaking like I am a, a method I'm a lover of methods right I mean I'm not going to tell this again but like the first trick I got was crystal cleaver which is a cool method so I think that's like ingrained in me so I am always striving for like the coolest best method and I think that's what sort of it's again from that passion because I love how things work and behind the scenes and seeing those cool principles that you just can't help but smile so that's what I'm trying to you know we mentioned we have things that are like 90 percent there but we're not happy that's with the method so for me like that is I know that like to a late to a late person they'll react to a lot of tricks I mean even if they aren't the best uh they'll still get a reaction but like there's something about just like profile that like you mentioned that that's such a cool method that it's like it makes me excited to perform it like yes the method allows for the freedom and all this stuff but like when you're excited to perform something because you love the method personally that's just going to come through some way in your performance or in your engagement in the effect. And that's contagious for the audience and they're going to pull and react off that. So it's this, all that comes together. And again, it's just that one word passion. Like if I'm passionate about uh, things that I enjoy and I love methods, like it all falls under that umbrella. So hopefully that's where answer is my perspective on that. Hmm. That's really, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the both of you are, are just so super clever when it comes about this. And that's what I love about your work. You both have incredibly interesting premises, but you both have very interesting methods as well. You know, I remember the first time I saw The Collector, I was like, that's so clever. That's so clever. I could have come up with a million ways of doing it that wouldn't have been anywhere near as cool as that. Um, just, just simply brilliant. Let me ask you a question. How do you guys handle, I think this is important to talk about as well, how do you handle disappointment and rejection? And what I mean by that is twofold. One, you're creating a trick and it's just not there. And you're going through idea after idea after idea and you know where you want it to be and you know where you want it to get to, but you can't figure out a way from getting to A to B. That's one thing. Like, when do you get to the point where you just go, you know what? Done. That's not you know or do you do you not do that do you do, what method do you do do you have you had routines together that you've come up with and you just can't come up with a method and and have you had to scrap them or have they eventually come out i'd love to know about that and also how do you handle rejection in terms of going to a magic you know you've got to this point where you've got a trick and you're shopping it around what happened now it's awkward because both of you now are superstars in magic i can imagine that if you just pick up the phone and go, hey, Sean, one of Nicholas Mavresis and David Jonathan trick, he's going to go, oh, yes, Penguin Magic will have that in a heartbeat. You know, and you'll do that with almost any company, Pete Nardi, you know, whoever, you know, Murphy's. But, you know, that wasn't always the case. You've had to build up to that level, build up to that brand. How did you handle in the early days rejection and, and, and companies going, well, no, I don't want that because that's something that a lot of new creators – experience all the time so there's a lot to unpack there a lot of questions but basically it's just about how to deal with frustration and yeah you know. let me let me tell you my thoughts on that first of all if we hit a dead end on a trick there's no disappointment it's you know it's a simple okay that's it you know we've done our best if we if we think of something better we can do that if not we'll put it to rest and that's it you know that's life we're not perfect but we're not going to sacrifice uh the quality of the whole trick just to get it out there so i'm proud to say that both david and uh, myself will not um settle on an average trick it doesn't mean it, our tricks are perfect but they are perfect in our minds you know <laughs> that's what we think so that's that's fine 
I mean, we are happy with the method, the premise, everything. That's why we put them out. If a trick hits a dead end and we cannot figure out the perfect way to do it and to get it out there, it's fine. I mean, we we have some tricks that uh, they are not there yet. So again, it's not it's all good. <laughs> so it, uh, there's no disappointment there, and there's no disappointment if we get rejected by a company. In fact, we do you know all the time. And some companies might take a trick, some others might not. Again, it's what I said earlier. Just accept that and try to figure out how you can make your trick better. Now we are in a situation where we've released, we both of us have released a lot of magic. We know where we stand. I mean, we know if a trick is going uh, to sell well and if it's taken by a specific company, you, you know that yourself, you know, that's a Murphy's trick, that's an Alakazam trick, that's a perfect fit for Penguin. You know, we we kind of know this stuff right now, but it's fine if you get rejected. I mean, you have to respect that. And, uh, you know, I see people, you know, writing angry posts on Facebook. They don't know that what they're doing. My trick is, you know, the best. And no, just, just accept that, you know, they have their opinion, you have your opinion, keep it for yourself and try to improve. You know, we always have to try to improve ourselves, not try to improve others. You know, they have their opinion, you have to respect that. So there's no disappointment. disappointment. Um, you know, I try to take a negative answer and make it work uh, on my way. You know, I, again, I, I try for the best. If I, you know, I might think, okay, it's not there yet. What can I do? What can I do? Not what others can do. What can I do to make it better? Um, now, in the early days, yeah, there was disappointment because you you want everyone to say yes to you, but then you are like twenty years old. You are, you know, you you don't know better. That's why now that that I'm older, I'm saying to the younger creators out there, don't be disappointed. Be, uh, you know, just keep going. Try to improve your magic, and. Uh, someday you will be rewarded. So in, in essence, there's no disappointment. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, like you just have to accept that it's part of the process. I mean, you are going to hit walls in your creation process. It'd be silly to think that you wouldn't, right? Like, it's not just like, oh yeah, boom, and here's the method. All right, and off to the next one. Like, it doesn't happen like that. Uh, so that's part of the process. You have to understand that. Um, it's okay to put things on the back burner and then revisit it. There's, again, I do that all the time. We hit a wall. All right, let's put a pin on it. Let's focus on this next thing, and we'll come back to that. Maybe something will hit, strike us. Um, but also, there's a lot of satisfaction where there is something on the back burner and then you have that eureka moment and then it comes together. Uh, like, again, it's like, it's a process, it's a journey. It's certainly frustrating at times when you hit a wall and you just can't like get past it. But that moment when you do is so gratifying on a personal level <laughs> that like you finally solve that part. Of, it's like when you solve a puzzle, think of it as a puzzle in front of you. And like that moment where you find the solution, you finish the puzzle, it's like, oh my God, and then you get that satisfaction moment. It's the same thing with creating magic. Uh, as far as, you know, dealing with companies and rejection, we hear no all the time. You know, we're not rock stars. I wish it was as easy as call the company and it's done. Um, but it, you have to understand, look at that through a few different lenses. So uh, one, it's okay to be disappointed. It's, we're humans, it's human nature. If someone's gonna reject something, it's okay to be like, man, that sucks. But you can't just sulk in that and then say, well, fuck that company and all, you know, right? You have to pick yourself up and say, okay, well, look, uh, what was their feedback? Okay, I see it now. Maybe my trick with 40 magnets and seven flaps wasn't the most practical for them to produce, even though the effect's incredible. Like, it's a business. They have to look at their costs. They have to look at the market for that type of effect. How will they make a profit off it? So at the end of the day, it's like, is it their car audience, you know? Uh, if you bring this like, uh, you know, dark, moody routine to someone like a Vanishing Ink, well, that doesn't really fit in their brand, right? So you have to sort of look at it beyond just the effect itself and from a business perspective as well of why it was a no. Uh, and then just pick yourself up and move on, whether that means self-releasing, 
putting it aside, do whatever it is. Uh, I mean, you know, there have been effects that, you know, maybe we thought were ready, and then we've heard some no's, then we said, okay, well, let's look at this again. How can we improve this? Oh, we can do this instead. And then, you know, three months later, it's about to be something much better. And then we'll say, hey, you want to take another look at this? And they'll be like, oh, that's much better. Now. Yeah, we're interested. So, you know, you just have to accept that it's a process and know that going in. That's great. Really great advice. And and here's a question. You both, right. So I think that you've both released Magic through Penguin and Murphy's, Alakazam. I know that you've got stuff coming out at some point or another with the 1914. So you, you, you've worked with some of the biggest companies that there are out there. Um, but you also self-release. Yeah. Uh, Nicholas, you've just bought out your first self-release, which is the, uh, the bigger, uh, which is really, really good. But obviously you've got a number of self-releases, both downloads and physical projects that have come out through the years on your um, uh, website as well. How do you decide when something, you know, you, you said, oh, this feels like a Penguin product. This feels like an Alakazam product. When do you decide that something, because ultimately at the end of the day, you, you guys have got a big name in Magic now. You've got a tribe of people that follow you. The reason why both of you release Magic and it's successful and financially viable for companies is because when the name Nicholas Mavresis and David Jonathan is behind a product, you're guaranteed to have a well thought out product that works, that does what it's meant to do on tip, it's not going to be crap. It's just not. So my, and I'm really interested in this because I don't self-release and I never have, and I probably never will. You've got that reputation now. Why would you not self-release everything? Why would you not say, you know what? We've bought stuff out through Murphy's. We've bought stuff out through Penguin. We've bought stuff out through Alakazam. We've got a big name in Magic now. We continue to put ourselves out there. Everybody knows who we are. We're going to bring it out ourselves. And then and then after we've had it exclusively on our, our sites for a bit, we'll drop it into Murphy's and all the other Magic dealers can get it. Why are you still working with all these other companies? Genuinely interested because I only ever work with companies. So it's it's something I'm really interested in. Really. Uh, okay, for me, it's a short answer. It's more It's more convenient to release a trick through a company. You know, you just sign a contract. It's up to them. They, they have, you know, they have to do everything. Now, if it's a, a simple trick to produce, we might as well self-produce it because it's not much of a hassle, you know. Uh, but yeah, if it's a trick that involves a lot of stuff like Premiere, you know, it involves a bunch of stuff. You have to talk to manufacturers and uh, there's lots of things going on, you know. Yeah, I, I wouldn't bother, to be honest. <laughs> But, you know, it's more convenient to have a company who knows how to do things. Now, if it's an item that we think we it's okay for us to self-produce and the quality will be, you know, very, very good, if not a lot of ha a hassle, yeah, I would, I would self-produce it. You know, short answer. David, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I agree with a lot of your points there. Um, I think that from my personal strategy, it's important to work with a lot of big companies to establish that brand and name recognition so that I built up an audience and have a mailing list and all this other stuff and a following so that if I do self-produce things, I'm, you know, have, you know, somewhat of a name in the industry. Uh, but I've, as far as physical products, I've done six self-releases. Some of them were joint projects of ours. I think Fortuna was probably our first joint self-release. Uh, and then part of it is just looking at like, can we do this as far as like what's involved in the process? Uh, you know, again, something like Premiere, we are talking about injection molding chips and all this like crazy stuff. Like we needed a Murphy's because that's beyond our wheelhouse of, you know, what we can viably put together. Um, but also, you know, <laughs> it's a lot of time and effort when you're making thousands of something uh, I mean, everyone thinks that, oh, Magic Famous is great. You can release all those effects. Like, you should have seen my freaking living room trying to put all these profiles and synergies together. It's just <laughs> like boxes and cards and all the stuff everywhere. I'm sure the same thing when you're putting bigger together. So, like, you're sitting there making, you know, over a thousand units of something. Like, everyone's like, oh, yeah, I want to be a Magic creator. It's like, yeah, they said you want to be Magic Famous, huh? Putting like, this thing together. So, you know, yes, that's part of it. But, um, you know, you have to look at, again, it's business. Business. You have to look at the financials or everything, how much is going to cost, model it all out, see what's viable for you. Because another thing with that is like, 
Um, obviously, you have to look at like your your cost per unit, right? And how many do you want to manufacture? Because that'll bring the cost per unit down. But that's laying out a lot more money up front, which is not guaranteed to get a return on just yet. So you have to sort of weigh all these things, or do you want to take that risk of putting all this stuff together yourself, and then hoping that you know. Uh, the Murphys or Penguin or whatever that'll sell, or if you're selling directly, that you'll recoup all that. Whereas if you go to a company, oh, yep, just sign your name, you get a royalty, they'll do everything, they take all the risk, and, you know, there's that to consider as well. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that's fascinating. This is this is an amazing interview, guys. Thank you so much for being so honest and sure. and, and forthright. It's great. So you, you've just had um, your first joint Alakazam Academy. I think it's the very first joint academy I've ever seen. It's the very first joint online lecture I've ever seen, to be perfectly honest. I've seen, I don't think I've ever seen one before. I'm trying to think. No, I've seen people like sitting in and helping, but not really a joint build um, <clears throat> lecture. How did that go? And are you planning on doing more with that? Like, is this something that's going to be bookable by conventions all over the world? You know, come and get... Uh, David Jonathan Nicholas Masbresis, you know, on a on a two for one deal. Like, is it what's what made you thought? What made you kind of go down the route of doing a joint online lecture? And what are your plans with that lecture moving forward? Uh, can I answer? Yeah. Okay. Let Let's do it. I think you know. I answer first. You go seventh. <laughs> <laughs> At least second fellow. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> It, you know, it was a great lecture. I think it was the best lecture I I, I was a part uh, of because, yeah, I was a part of a lecture. It wasn't just uh, my lecture. And uh, it was a great one. I think speaking of about David's effects, it was great. I enjoyed watching David showing these effects. And I think with the, com with the combination of my effects, uh, it, it all blended very well. You know, it was a really nice structure. Uh, lecture we gave away a few gifts but yeah I, you know looking back to it i think it was really nice but you know i cannot hype up the lecture because i was part of it uh you know a lot of things as i said in during the lecture you know you watch david perform some of his effects and you might think that i created them you might watch, watch me perform some of my effects and you might think that's a you know a David Jonathan creation, but you know because and that that's the reason why I said you know we think along the same lines and I think it worked really well. It was like a lecture by one person, not by two. Uh, it was like watching a lecture by yeah one person, but I really enjoyed it. To be to be honest, I got a lot of a lot of great feedback from people, and I yeah, I really hope we do it. Uh, Again, you know, I maybe you know what, maybe uh, the, your your podcast with uh, Lloyd. Maybe you do a convention. You invite us both to lecture there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> Just put them on the spot, why don't you? <laughs> um, no, so for for me, I, I I thought it went great. All the feedback we received was great. Um, as far as something that we would do again, uh, absolutely. I mean. Why wouldn't we want to take that on the road and do it at a convention? Uh, it was, as Nicholas kind of said, this lecture was a lot of, you know, his stuff and my stuff back and forth. Uh, that's not to say that we couldn't do a lecture of more joint material. It's just that you have to remember this was our fifth Alakazam Academy between us. So in the first four, we had done a lot of joint stuff, uh, but we could like do an entire lecture of all of our joint creations. I think we have enough to like fill that all out. Um, cause a lot of it's like marketed to, this is a tangent, but you know, like I think so much about lectures and I know you have the same philosophy as me, Craig, where it's like, you want people to have value. You don't want it to be a dealer down. Like I literally change my set list every lecture because I want when people come to see me that I don't want them to say, oh, we've seen David lecture before because it's going to be different every single time. And I painstakingly go through and say, okay, this is one they can do, this one they have to buy, this is this, to make sure that like I have a lot in there that people go away with that they can do right on the spot as opposed to like, oh, Dave was great. He had a lot of fun stuff for sale. That's clever. Like <laughs> that's the <laughs> last thing I want to hear. Um, so yeah, I know a little side tangent there, but we would love to bring our lecture on the road. Also, also, I have to say that we demonstrated 10 effects, 
10 unpublished effects mm -hmm. never seen before. You know, that's really important. Every time we do a lecture, uh, you know, yeah, we did five. Now, now it's the sixth, right? Uh, amongst us and, and we showed you know that one was all unpublished unpublished effects so people watched it for the first time ever except one trick i think the uh, first one that's, yep that's great that's amazing so what is lined up i'm going to get a sneak peek here now i'm going to try and get some oh information out of you guys um what have we got coming up in 2024? Because I know that you guys have probably got the next three years planned out. Because one thing that, actually, before we talk about that, on that subject, one thing that I think most people in the magic community don't understand is just how long it takes to get this thing to market. I was speaking to a magician the other day who'd never created anything, but uh, he was like, um, I, 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 you know, I imagine you have the idea and then two weeks later it's on the shelves. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've got a trick coming out in Murphy's in January that's took like two years to get to. And I didn't go to Murphy's with it until I had a finished product from my point of view. Two years ago, I went to Murphy's and I was like, here, here's the files. I've done all of the work. Just print it and get me to do a tutorial. Two years later, it's now coming out. I mean, I don't think people realize how long it takes to get this stuff to market and how much effort it takes. When you see that trick, drop on penguins new arrival list or on your favorite magic dealers new arrival list understand that to get that to the point where it's got assets it's got videos it's got the tutorial it's got uh, the packaging and everything yeah however long you think it is it's a hell of a lot longer it's a frustrating thing sometimes yeah yeah it is yeah at the end of uh of the cat the joint academy we were talking about like upcoming stuff with the year and peter's like oh yeah the the black and white thing that's We've talked about in your channel before. Peter's been like, yeah, what's it been, like five years? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it takes time. <laughs> it really it, does. It does it take does. time. But 2024 so, is very exciting. We have a lot of fun stuff planned. Uh, so what are you going to try to pry what out of can us? You tell me? What can you tell me? I don't want to push you. to Because I know the, 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 the problem is a lot of people think, Oh, magic, it's just all hyped up. But that's actually not the truth. Until this thing is ready to come out, there's a lot that you can't see, say because it could lead to somebody else doing something. You know, there's, there's a lot that you can't see, and I totally get that. But is there anything that you can say, both individually and together, about stuff that... Come on, come on. I'll, I'll spill the beans. I'll spill the beans, okay? It's fine. I know David might not want to do that. So I'll tell you the name. Because I'm going to mute him now and make it so that he can't unmute himself. So you just okay, He's actually about to demo everything for you right now. <laughs> no, I'm Hang on, let, let me just find the kick David. <laughs> let me just find the kick David off the Zoom button here and we'll, uh, we'll begin. Right, okay. <laughs> well, no, I, okay, I cannot talk specifics. <laughs> But we have the best ESP effect coming from, uh, out from Penguin Magic. I think it's now, a great... I, I have to say, yep. the best ESP style matchup I've ever seen was by Penguin Magic and also by David Jonathan. I thought that the use of the colors and the method with color sync. Yeah. Oh, is it is ESP prediction. Okay. Of, right. of a, yeah, I guess we'll call it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not a it's matchup. Really Really straight, yeah. It's not a matchup effect. It's thank you. really straightforward. You know, they choose. I, I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to explain. Uh, you know, the. I'm not going to. You know, tell you the description of the trick, but it's an ESP effect, and it's a perfect EDC. It's very, very strong, very straightforward. You know what? Have... I'll just cut you off. If you're an eagle eye viewer and dig back to our appearances on Craig's channel, you might see a performance of it. Yeah, no, just leave it at that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I think I know what that means now. I think I do. Yeah. yeah. And if you so, want to see Craig in his fooled face, go watch that and find that performance. Now I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Something wow. like that. <laughs> so that's what I love about your material. I, 
you guys tend to show it me before it hits the market and i'm pretty sure it's because you want my full face on every trailer because everything you show me just fools the ever-loving crap out of me every time i see it i just have no idea what you guys do it's brilliant so the, yeah. the next uh joint thing probably is our envelopes uh again i i I'm just going to speak in general terms because we don't know, <laughs> like you said, we think it's, we have a general idea, but it's very rare that companies actually meet the window they tell you and who knows what happens. So I'll tell you stuff especially, in the pipeline. Especially Penguin. I love Penguin. I love everybody at Penguin. Yeah. I love working with Penguin. But the day that you find out they've released a trick is normally when you've had an email, a sales email. You find out about it after everybody else on their email list. Yeah, exactly. They don't say, Hey, we're going to release your trick in two weeks' time. They don't give you any notice about it. It's just like, it's just come out. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, like this is stuff that's in the pipeline. Don't I'm not going to give you release dates because it may be 2024. It may be a month or two from now. It might be a year. But uh, our envelopes are very far along. Uh, it's for mentalists and magicians, and it's a really cool utility. And we, I think, extracted so much out of what it does because there's over 10 routines in the project and we spoke last time we're going to get craig patty involved too we're going to send you a set from murphy's when we have them in uh so that's one that i'm really excited about and i think that mentalists in particular are going to love uh what else do we have i for me i my, i'm continuing on the phone stuff i have another uh multi-effect phone project coming out uh hopefully january or february that one's very far along. Uh, there is some insane stuff on there. Uh, it's really got a lot of variety of all things that are just on your phone with no apps. So you know what that means. Um, what we'll else? Tell you, I will tell you that the uh, uh, the IMDB routine from Synergy has become like my favorite impromptu trick. Oh, wow. Thank you. Like That's genuinely, awesome. like okay, I'm here, and and this is my everyday carry. I'm not like going to a gig today. This is my everyday carry. Look at what's in my pocket. This is my everyday. This is what's in my pocket. Like seriously, <laughs> have that with me everywhere. Yeah, so. it fits in that little uh, the coin purse, the little coin like pocket in your mm -hmm. jeans. So well, that, that's what it just goes. Everywhere with me. Yeah, it's brilliant. So, yes, there's more along that. I think there is, like, four other phone things in the pipeline, uh, including that actually being a part of the music thing that I mentioned, which you don't even need your phone for, but there's one killer routine with that. Uh, that's a joint thing between us. Um, what else is there? There's... God, there's so much. Well, Nicholas, I mean, his, his, he has like 10 things with Alkazam. He's, he's Craig Petty Jr. over here, so maybe you can talk a little bit about those. Yeah, lot, lots of things, you know, I don't know what is coming, you know, first, and I, I don't know, I, I know for sure that because Valentine's Day is on February, maybe the anniversary waltz trick is going to get released. I actually have the anniversary waltz trick, Peter gave me one, and it's brilliant. Okay, I'm looking forward to brilliant. watching you perform it. <laughs> it's brilliant, it's brilliant, it's brilliant, it's brilliant. And obviously the running gag with you is Poison 2, right? Yeah, poison too. <laughs> we have like twenty routines lined up, ready, you know, all filmed. But Peter needs to do the editing, and yeah, people, you know, I get messages when is poison two coming out, and you know, it's ready. I mean, but you know, the only thing left is editing. So, I have one to say that uh, we've never mentioned before, but I think it's a good time to say it because uh, we're excited about this. Uh, I don't know release date or anything, but we're working with TCC and we're super excited to be working with them because everything they oh, put yeah. out is incredible. Wow, that's a big yeah. deal. That's a big deal. I love TCC. I really do. Yeah, they're fantastic. I don't know how they put so much quality into such an affordable price. No, me neither. But, uh, I can't say any more, but that is something that's coming at some point. Yeah, lo lots of things. Lots of things. We're so excited. You know, we do what we love and uh, yeah. You know, that fills my heart, you know, being occupied, doing things that I love. It's all about, you know, as David said, passion. That That's the only word that describes everything. Yeah, that's that's such a great way of summing it up. I heard a little bird told me, by the way, that Snaps is getting reprinted very soon. It is, and it's going to be a little bit bigger. 
Hey, a jumbo <laughs> version of snaps. Oh my God. That would be amazing. It is happening. Um, I don't know when, but yeah, the demand is more than there for it. Uh, and that is in, in, in the works. Oh, wow. Which is a, a no brainer when you think about it. Yeah, it really is. It really is like so many people use that i use that all the time it's just great it's absolutely fantastic oh my god wow brilliant <laughs> lots of stuff to look forward to but again don't ask me anything about release dates because <laughs> who knows <laughs> you don't you don't know you don't know and and here's one question for oh, you oh sorry let me just say we were talking about self-production that's one of the biggest things i love about it is we're in control of everything we have full creative say i know this is back to a tangent but like i can tell you for sure when some that we're self-producing is coming out i can't say that for any other company so that i think having that creative control and control over all those aspects is one of the biggest reasons why uh, we also do that as well but Eddie, I should have said that earlier. It just came to me. Now back to what you're going to say. <laughs> well, I was going to say, talking about self-production, um, are, are you are, on your website? You've you've got some uh, downloads. I mean, threesome, which is on your website, is one of my. Is it threesome? Is one of my favorite imports yes. of all time. Are you? Uh, I've spoken to people in the industry that are saying to me that downloads are dead. But I'm having I'm having other conversations with people that are saying no, they're not dead. They're great. Like. Where are you in terms of downloads? Is that still something that you do, David? Is that something you would still do? Or is that kind of something that doesn't really I'm, work anymore? I'm not against it. I know I I think that it's really sad that we're going to let pirates dictate the magic industry of, oh, things are getting pirated, so downloads are dead. Like, that, that just sucks. That And I don't want to kill off uh, gimmickless magic, which I think this is doing. So I have some strong opinions about it personally. But I mean, look at Greg Rostami's Angel Number, which has blown up recently, and that's a download, and that seems to be doing fantastic. So there's an argument that it still is viable. Um, whether I mean, again, he self-released that, so maybe it's the companies aren't interested. But um, I don't know. I if if the right effect comes along with a method that is something that, you know, you don't need to buy something, I have no issues with putting out a download. It just depends on what the creative entails. That's my opinion. One last question before we finish off, because I know Nicholas has got to rush off any minute now. So I'm going to wrap this up with one last question, which is if, you know, two very successful creators that work together and have built up a huge name for yourselves, both of you, if you could give one piece of advice to anyone watching this that wants to be a creator, I know you've already given some amazing advice, but if you can give one last piece of advice each to anybody who wants to be in your position in the coming years and whatever it is, what one piece of advice would you offer them? And let's not break a habit. Nicholas, you go first. Okay. Be original. <laughs> Don't try to copy others. You know, that's very important. And in order to do that, just sit down, take the moment to go somewhere quiet, sit down, really think what do you, what you enjoy. And if you're good at it, you're going to be rewarded. And if you're creative, you're going to be rewarded. If you are original, you're going to be rewarded. And if you're not, you're going to be, um, what, what's the word? Uh, criticized, you know, just, be, you know, be original and don't don't give up again you will you will hear a lot of no's from companies uh, you know just just keep going and try to improve your magic and that's the only advice i can i can give great advice for me as i said find out what you're passionate about focus on that just that will just come more easily to you uh if you're struggling for ideas best piece of advice i can give is you can't force anything. The best time for me, and it might be different for other people, is right before bed when you're lying in bed. Your phone's away, there's no electronics, no disturbances, it's dark, it's quiet, it's peaceful. That's when your brain can start to flow. And that's when I have the best ideas. So always keep a, my phone with the notes app or a notepad by your bed, because I guarantee that if you spend just 10 minutes with your eyes closed in bed, just letting your mind flow, thinking about whatever it may be, ideas will come to you. Whether you're thinking of an effect, that's when it'll strike. It happens for me all the time. Same thing with people say in the shower. Again, there's no distractions. You feel the water on you, it's peaceful. It's like you find that Zen state 
I mean, <laughs> um, right. But like, it is like, you're just not distracted. And that's when your brain can really tap in your creativity. You know, so, worst case scenario, you're going to sleep. So it's a win-win situation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's great advice. Absolutely great advice. Guys, thank you so much for coming on the channel. I know how busy you both are. I know, Nicholas, you've got to rush off. But I want to say thank you so much for coming on the channel. And I want everyone who's watched this to do two things. One, leave a comment down below and let David and Nicholas know how amazing they are. And two, make sure you keep track of these guys uh, because they've got material coming out all of the time and if you want something that's absolutely heavy hitting and is always going to work you want to uh, you want to check out their material now david you've got your website davidjonathanmagic.com um and on there you can sign up for your email newsletter and you get a free trick which is a sandwich trick that's very cool um <clears throat> nicholas have you got your website have you got a website yeah, yeah it's mavresis.com but there's no subscription <laughs> i didn't go that far <laughs> But all my tricks, all my tricks are listed there. So yeah, people can go there and search and buy anything. That's brilliant. So go check these guys out. If Nicholas ever bothers getting an email list, go and subscribe to that one. But definitely subscribe <laughs> to David's. And uh, guys, thank you so much for coming on the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank Thanks you so much. Thanks so much. No problem. Uh, and if you haven't already done so, go check out their Alakazam Academy because it is a fantastic academy. You can buy it now, uh, alakazam.co.uk, and it is awesome, as are all their other academies and everything else they've done. But do me a favor, let, uh, leave a comment down below. Let them know what they thought. Thank you once again for joining me here on Talk Magic. I'll be back with another, uh, another video soon, but this has been an absolute masterclass in creativity and how you can have two people come together and even though they're both amazing individually together that it's kind of like it's kind of like power rangers isn't it you know they've got their own little machines uh and they're great but when they come together it's it's unstoppable that's what you two are you're power rangers so thanks so much guys thanks so much thanks so much <laughs> on behalf of nicholas and david i'll see you again soon my name's craig magic tv <laughs>